Hi, this is Avinash Pujari and I am your trainer for the online AIX training. About me, I have almost 10 plus years of experience in IT industry and out of 10 years of experience, I have 9 plus years of uh, experience on IBM AIX, SAN, then backup technologies, virtualization technologies like VMware, Citrix and the uh, Red Hat Linux technology and Veritas cluster and Veritas volume manager also. In 2009, I have done the certification of uh, AIX. You can see this IBM Certified Specialist System P Administration. So I'll be taking all your online training sessions. About AIX, it is Advanced Interactive Executive. So it is the proprietary operating system of the IBM, which was installed only on the proprietary hardware of the IBM. So it was launched in the year 1986. It has become the standard operating system for the RS6000 series on its launch in 1990 and is still actively developed by IBM. It is currently supported on power systems. If you have to go for the certification, uh, just go through this uh, website www-03.ibm.com slash certify slash test slash sam c9010-022 dot shtml. About this test, uh, name of this test is IBM AX Administration Version 1. In this test, uh, we'll get uh, 62 questions and time allowed 120 minutes. We have to score minimum 58% to pass this exam and language is English. What are we going to cover in this training? So, total 19 topics are there. First topic is the AX and the power hardware history. So, to become master in the AX technology, you should uh, know the AIX versions and the power hardware versions also. Then um, second is installation of AIX. So I'll be showing you how to do the installation of AIX operating system on a power hardware. There are three types of installation available. New and complete overwrite, migration installation and preservation installation. So I'll be showing you new and complete overwrite. Boot process and shutdown process. So boot process is very important interview question. So we'll be um, discussing this one in detail. Paging space, it is nothing but a virtual memory available in AIX technology to improve the performance of the system. So in this uh, paging space, uh, we'll be seeing the commands related to the paging space, how to create the paging space, how to delete that one, how to expand the size of this one. Then fifth topic is devices. This is very important topic because IBM AIX, it is the proprietary operating system of the IBM, which gets installed only on the proprietary hardware of the IBM. So whatever devices you want to purchase, you have to purchase it from the IBM itself. That's why devices is very important. Then LVM, this is logical volume manager. In this, we'll be covering what is volume group, what is logical volume, what is physical volume, what is physical partition, what is log logical partition, what are the rules there and how to break those rules. All those things will be covering in the logical volume manager. Seventh topic is file system. So we'll be seeing how to create a file system on AIX. We'll be focusing mainly on JFS and JFS2 file system. So JFS2, it is the enhanced general file system and JFS, it is general file system. So we'll be seeing the difference between that. Eighth topic is the job scheduling. So how to schedule a job in AIX, we'll be seeing that one. Then ninth one is the backup and restore, very important topic. In AIX, uh, there is MKCSB command. By using that one, we can create the bootable backup image copy of the AIX operating system. If system is down, in that case, we can boot the system from the backup copy. Then um, software installation, how to do the installation of software on AIX operating system. Then user administration is the 11th topic. 12th topic, SAN connectivity with AIX. So we'll be covering what is the HBA card, how to connect the HBA card to the AIX server, what commands we need to fire and what is multipathing. All those things we'll be covering on 12th topic. Then 13th one is the uh, network administration. In network administration, we'll be covering how to assign the IP address to the AIX system, how to assign the host name, how to make an entry in the slash etc host file, and what is link aggregation. 14 one services services uh, basically services it is the background process for the front end application so uh, we'll be seeing how to start the service how to stop the service how to restart the service how to manage the services 15th one is the monitoring and tuning so what are the monitoring commands available in ax we'll be covering that one and how to tune the parameters if you 
if you want to improve the performance of the system. The 16th one is the WPAR. Uh, it's nothing but a workload partitioning. So this uh, we call it as a software virtualization also. So we'll be covering the WPAR also in depth. Then uh, 17th one, basic Unix commands. So uh, commands like uh, ls, cd, pwd, wc, all these commands will be covering in a basic Unix commands and of course VI editor. 18th topic is internal question. We'll be discussing some internal questions which will be helpful for you to crack the interview. And 19th one is the overview of the advanced AIX. Okay, so in, uh, in advanced AIX, cluster and the virtual. Hello friends, this is Avinash Pujari. Today I am going to show you AIX 7.2 installation on Power7 server. So this is our HMC and Power7 server is already registered with it. Select the server, go to the options, click on configuration, create logical partition and select AIX or Linux. Then here you can see that partition ID is 3 because uh, already uh, two partitions are there and I'll give the partition name AIX 7.2. Click on next. And I want to give the profile name Pro1. So I need this one for the installation purpose. So I'll use this Pro1 and click on next. This Power7 server is virtualized. So uh, two options are available, dedicated and shared. So I'll go with the shared option. And for the installation of AIX 7.2 minimum 0.1 processor is sufficient but in this case I'll go with the 2.0 then desired processing unit 2.5 and maximum processing unit 3.0 and uh, here minimum processing units required for each virtual processor is 0.10 so minimum virtual processors I'll give here 20 desired virtual processors 25 and maximum virtual processor 30 next For the installation, 2GB RAM is sufficient. Here I'll give 4GB minimum. Desired memory is 6GB and uh, 256MB. Maximum memory 8GB and 512MB. Click on next. All these I devices I want to give to the AI 7.2. I don't want to create any virtual adapters. So I'll click on next and boot the system into the SMS mode. Select SMS, click next. So this is the complete profile summary. Partition ID is 3 AX. Partition name is 7.2, installing AX7 or a Linux. Profile name Pro1, 6GB RAM, processing unit 2.5, finish. So you can see that AX7.2 partition has been created successfully. Now let's do the installation. For that, select the machine, go to the operation, activate, profile. Select Pro 1, open terminal window or a console session. We need to select this and go to the advanced option. And here, boot mode, boot mode SMS. Select SMS and click on OK. It will start the installation. Here in SMS menu, we need to make first boot device as a CD-ROM. So if you want to do the installation through the name, then um, go with the second option that is set up remote IPL, but we don't want name right now. So select the fifth option.
then press 1 select install boot device order here we can click on list all devices press 7 enter and select first boot device as a CD-ROM are you sure you want to exit system management services one yes and it will start our installation of AIX 7.2 type 1 and press enter to use this terminal and type 1 and press enter to have English during install start install now with default setting if you want to change the setting select the second option enter and you can see that system has selected migration and the uh, disk where you want to install so why it has selected migration because already ax 7.1 operating system is there okay so uh, system has selected method of installation migration so we want to change that so select the first option here new and complete overwrite we don't want to do the migration press 1 enter and disk where you want to install the operating system so select the disk drive select edition there are two uh, editions available with 7.2 standard and enterprise we'll select the standard edition and we'll do the installation zero install with the current settings listed above so press zero enter so these are the choices this is the summary press one and continue with install Once the installation is done, configuration assistant will be opened and there we need to set the date and time, root password and uh, IP address of the system, host name of the system and we have to accept the licenses also. So you can see that AIX 7.2 operating system is running successfully. This way we do the installation. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe our channel. In this video, we are going to see basic Unix commands. For that, I have created one notepad file over here. So in this notepad you can see 22 commands are there so we are going to see this one practically for that I have one unix machine over here so let me clear this and let's start with the first command ls so ls you can see that it is listing all the files present inside of the directory so I am into this slash tmp directory okay so if you see this is the 22nd command pwd to check the present working directory in unix it is very important to know uh, we are operating it from which directory okay that's why this command is important so if i press cd then it will take me to the home directory of the root user i have logged into this system with the username root so slash is the uh, root home directory then if i want to change the directory to slash etc i'll be able to do that and then you can see that pwd if i press ls again all the files will be listed and to get details of that ls hyphen ltr we can try okay and it will give the complete output about that then in unix useful command is the man if i 
use the man command it is to read the manual page of the command so errpt for example i am using the ax machine so it is the manual page of the errpt command so in uh, manual we get the purpose of the command then how to use that command so we get the syntax of it this um, it shows the description of the command also flags usage of the flags and it shows the example also how to use that command actually with different different flags then let's create one file let's create the file by using the touch command so i'm into the slash atc directory let's go to the home directory of the root i want to create a file over here okay with name f1 by using this command i can create multiple files also like f2 f3 f4 f5 it will create blank files ls you can see that f1 f2 f3 f4 f5 these commands are there then if i use rm f5 it will delete the file i'll show you the output you can see that it is deleted here it was there after firing rm it is deleted successfully now we have f1 f2 f3 f4 over here okay so let me write something inside of the f1 so to write or to edit file vi f1 vi editor is the tool to write into this press i and uh, type anything like welcome to goals enjoy your study time visit www.goalsinfocloud.com very good youtube tutorial and then save this file by pressing escape colon wq and exclamation okay so to read this file cat f1 you can see that uh, welcome to goals enjoy your study time visit www.goalsinfocloud.com and very good youtube tutorial then now if i press cat f f2 there is nothing in f3 also it is a blank file and f4 it is also a blank file so i'll uh, edit this f2 to show you the how to uh, do the append and overwrite of the file so vi f2 and let's say i want to learn unix in depth also would like to learn ax technology and save this file okay great so cat f2 you can see that i want to learn unix in depth and also would like to learn ax technology okay and cat f1 we have welcome to goals enjoy your study time very good youtube tutorial okay now in f3 it is a blank file okay so what i'll do i'll cat f1 and then f3 what it will do it will send all the output of f1 to f3 so cat f3 you can see that welcome to goals okay so uh, this is written into the f3 then if i fire cat f2 and colon colon then f3 it will append the file okay so cat f3 you can see the output that uh, welcome to goals enjoy your study time very good youtube tutorial and then i want to learn unix in depth and also would like to learn the ax technology so after uh, finishing this tutorial it has appended the output over here okay then if i uh, fire the command cat f4 f4 is a blank file then two times greater than sign and f3 now so let's see the result cat f3 So there is nothing to append in the F4, but if I use cat F4, F3, 
let's say the output so f3 is overwritten by f4 so it is a blank file now so this way this um, append and the overwrite works let's create the directory we are into home directory of root so to create new directory mkdir let's say directory name is goals so i have created goals directory successfully cd goals so i'm into this directory if i fire the pwd it should show slash goals you can see that slash goals is there then to remove a directory first of all i have to come out of this directory and then rmdir goals okay it is removed successfully if i file cd goals again you can see that it is not found because i have deleted that one okay then let's see the uh, more command and less command how does it work so for that uh, well in aix to see the errors errpt is the command but if i fire this one it will show me the last line directly of that file so to read the errors page wise errpt pipe what pipe does actually it redirects the output of the first command to the next command and then more so to see the page wise output enter so i can read the output page wise same thing happens with the less command errpt pipe less Okay, let's see the uh, head command and tail command. Uh, head, then uh, slash etc, slash security, slash limits. So it will show only first 10 lines of this file. Okay, if I use the tail command on the same file, slash etc, slash security, slash limits. So it will show me the last 10 lines of the file. Okay. So if you want to read first 15 lines, you can use this head hyphen 15 and the location of a file. So I'll copy this. Now you can see that it is showing 15 lines over here. Okay. I'll use this uh, word count command on the same file. So you can see that uh, 70 lines are there, 249 words are there and 1430 characters are there. So this way we use this word count uh, command if you want to see the background processes running in the unix technology ps hyphen ef command will be helpful i lose pipe more to see the page wise output so uh, these are uh, you can see that uid pid that is process id then parent process id so all these ids are there if you want to kill anything you should uh, get the pid over here for the process and then you can kill that one then cp command and mv command is there we'll use this one again cd slash we'll use this uh, cp and mv command so cp f2 f3 cat f3 I want to learn Unix in depth, also would like to learn AI technology. So what we have done, we have copied the content of F2 to F3. That's why cat is showing this output. Then MV F3 F5. So what I have done here, actually, I have renamed the file. Okay, so if I press LS here, you can see that uh, F3 is not present f5 is present so this way we can rename the file okay and if you want to move the file from one location to another location same command will be helpful for you okay and then uh, to use the kill command kill hyphen 9 and the process id pid you have to give over here okay so it will kill the process so i have not specified any identifier over here so from the ps hyphen ef you can get that one and you can fire this command Thank you for watching this video subscribe our channel to get up to get more video updates to get more video updates thank you uh lvm rules in first part i have uh, uh,
told you the 11 rules are there, right? Uh, related to the LVM. Yes, right. Okay. Yeah. So today we'll see how to break those rules. Okay. LVM. So first we'll check uh, types of VG. Okay. So in AIX, uh, different different types of VGs are available, and depending on a VG, we can add the number of v, uh, PVs. We can create the number of LVs, and the uh, it defines the PP size also. Okay. So types are uh, normal VG, then big VG, and scalable VG. Okay. Big VG and scalable VG. Scalable. Okay. So in a normal VG, how many PVs can be added? So maximum 32 PVs we can add. Maximum 256 LVs can be created mm -hmm. and maximum PP size is 1 GB allowed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Minimum 1 MB, maximum 1 GB. Mm -hmm. uh, in big VG, 128 PVs can be added and 512 LVs can be created and maximum PP size allowed is 1 GB. Mm -hmm. And in scalable VG, it's uh, 1024 PVs can be added, 4096 LVs can be created and maximum PP size allowed is 128 GB. Okay, so if uh, <clears throat> you have a, a server on, on that, if you have to store uh, maximum data, you can go with this scalable VG. So scalable VG, it is uh, rarely used actually in uh, environment. Okay, so number of PVs, then uh, here number of LVs and uh, here max pp size okay maximum pp size okay so can we convert this one from normal vg to big vg so answer is yes it uh, can be converted so to convert that one command is uh, chvg hyphen capital b and the vg name if we fire this command okay uh, we can convert the normal vg to big vg okay uh, Basically, when we fire the MKVG uh, to create a new volume group without any flag, it creates the normal VG. Okay, and later, if you required, we can convert it to the big VG. Okay, then if you want to convert the uh, VG to the scalable VG, in that case, now first of all, we need to vary of VG, VG name. So when we vary of VG, actually downtime is required for that. Okay, then chvg hyphen capital g and the vg name and the vg name okay and once it is converted then we can bring it online vary on vg and the vg name okay so these commands we have to fire reverse is not possible okay you can convert normal to the scalable directly okay but scalable to normal is not possible big to normal is not possible if you want to do that then you have to destroy the vg and you have to uh, create it freshly. Okay. Great. Then <clears throat> there is a concept called as uh, VGDA, that is uh, Volume Group Descriptor Area. Descriptor Area. And uh, Volume Group Descriptor Area basically it contains the complete volume group information. Okay. In AIX, when we fire the LSVG VG name, okay, it shows the complete information of mm -hmm. a VG, right? It shows the VG name, how many PVs are there, how many LVs are there, what type of VG mm -hmm. is it, then quorum and other stuff it shows, mm -hmm. okay? So actually, it reads the information from the VGDA, mm -hmm. okay? So uh, about VGDA in AIX, there is a very important interview question, mm -hmm. okay? So to understand that one, you should uh, know the structure of the VGDA. So I'll open the MS Paint. Okay. Uh, now, interesting thing over here is VGDA is very important part of the AIX operating system or the any volume group, I would say. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if the VGD is corrupt, we will not be able to access the VG. Mm -hmm. Okay. If the VGD is corrupt, we will not be able to access the VG. So VGDA is so important. That's why in AIX, if we have one PV in a VG, mm -hmm. Okay, if we have only one PV, in that case, 
AIX creates two copies of VGD, two copies of VGD, okay, because it is very important, okay, it creates two copies of VGD. So, if we have one PV in a VG, then two VGDA copies gets created, okay. Then, if we have two PVs in a VG, in that case, in AIX, three copies of VGDA will get created. Okay. This is the automatic thing, but you should know this is the internal question. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, two PV in a VG, it creates three VGDA copies. How it, uh, it gets created? So, here, VGDA, one copy over here, VGDA. And one more copy over here. So total three copies will get created. Mm -hmm. Okay, clear yeah. about this. And then, if we have three PVs in a VG, three PVs in a VG. In that case, three VG mm -hmm. copies. Okay. So in normal VG, maximum thirty two. PVs can be added. That means maximum 32 VGDA copies can get created. Mm -hmm. Okay. But this is the interview mm -hmm. question. VGDA. VGDA. And uh, VGDA. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if we have three PV in a VG, three VGDA copies. So here, if we have one, two VGDAs, if we have two, three VGDAs, and if we have three, three VGDAs, if we have four, four VGDAs, like that, up to 32, 32 VGDAs. Okay, so this is the structure of the VGDA. Yes. Clear yes. about this? Oh, great. So uh, in AIX, there is a concept available uh, on this VGDA that is quorum. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's see what is quorum actually. So for easy understanding, quorum is basically it is uh, the inbuilt software to monitor the VG health by checking the VG DA availability. availability. So it is the inbuilt tool available in AIX operating system. Okay. So instead of software, we can say tool to monitor the VGDA health or uh, to monitor the VG health by checking the VGDA availability. Okay. So uh, how this quorum works? So basically, if the quorum is enabled, if the quorum is enabled, uh, our VGDA availability should be more than 50% should be more than 50%. If it is not more than 50%, okay, uh, this quorum will bring the VG offline just to secure mm -hmm. your data. Okay, so that's why your availability of the VGDA should be more than 50%. Now, to enable quorum, to enable quorum, uh, command is chvg hyphen capital Q small y and the VG name okay and to disable quorum to disable quorum ch vg hyphen q small n VG name okay so if you give the y flag it will be enabled and if you give uh, n flag then it will be disabled okay great then uh, there is a concept called as t factor t factor okay so there is no uh, full form for the t actually but what happens actually t value is a 2 raised to 0 that is 1 actually Okay, mm. T value by default is 2 raised to 0, that is 1. And when the T value is uh, 1, 
in BG, we can add 32 PVs, okay? And in a single PV, 1016, 1016, 1016, okay, 1016 PPs per PV allowed, okay? So, if you want to, uh, have more pps in a pv okay you have to change the t value okay so to make this t value equal to 2 you have to pass the command phv hyphen t 2 okay and uh, here we name what happens actually after firing this one after successful execution of this command in a VG, 16 PVs can be added, okay, and it is inversely proportional to the PP count. So 2032 PPs per PV, okay, 2032 PPs per PV can be created. The same way we can change the T value to 4 also, that is 2 raised to 2. And here hash cxvg hyphen t4 and the vg name okay so what will happen after firing this command in a vg 8 pvs can be added okay and here 4064 pps per pv can be created okay Got the concept about P factor? Great. So, uh, in AIX, uh, there is a concept called as P factor also. I mean, P factor is a parameter, no? For yeah, such a parameter. Right, it's a parameter. Okay. Okay. Great. Uh, then, uh, in AIX, uh, P factor is also available. You will not find P factor on Google or uh, in any documents. But uh, if you do the man page of a CHVG, okay, in that uh, P value is uh, mentioned. Okay, uh, in real time environment, uh, very rarely P factor is used because it works with the scalable VG only. And in uh, market, uh, there are very few customers who uses this, uh, uh, you know, P uh, scalable VG actually. Okay, so um, now let's see the internal question, how to migrate root VG from one PV to another online, means without downtime in AIX, we can migrate the operating system from one hard disk to another hard disk, okay. So for that, first of all, uh, we should have a basic information with us and that a basic information includes the LSVG mm -hmm. root VG, we should have this one, then uh, LSVG hyphen P root VG, it shows uh, how many PVs are there actually in a VG, okay, then LSVG hyphen L root VG to see the logical volumes, okay? And then, let's say uh, we have added a new disk into the VG, okay? After adding that one, CFGMJR mm -hmm. command we have to fire to detect that one, okay? So, let's say, let's say, new disk name is as disk seven okay for our understanding okay and then first thing we need to fire the command extend vg root vg and h disk seven h disk seven we have to add the h disk seven in a root vg okay and then once it is added we can fire the command migrate pv slash dev h disk 0 let's say h disk 0 uh, is the disk mm -hmm. which contains the root vg and uh, slash dev 
Yeah. H disk. Mm. Seven. Okay. That means migrate. What are the data is present on the hard disk zero to the hard disk seven? Okay. Once the migration is successful, then uh, we have to fire the command boss boot hyphen ad on H disk seven. Okay. This command uh, will basically uh, create the uh, BLV. Okay. Boot logical volume. On a uh, H disk seven, okay. We will be on H disk mm -hmm. seven. Okay. Once it is created, then we need to change the boot list, right? After migration of this one, we need to make the first boot device hard disk seven because the hard disk zero mm -hmm. we have migrated everything, right? So in AX to change the boot list command is boot list hyphen m normal. Okay, and uh, at this mm. seven. Okay, so this is the command to change the boot list. To change the boot list. Okay, and uh, then you can uh, remove the edge disk zero by using the reduce vg command. Reduce vg. Root VG at the disk zero. Okay, and once it is removed successfully to test that one, you can fire the command shut down hyphen fr just to test whether the activity is successful or not. So let's fire the command root. Okay, password I have changed. Okay, so it's a uh, del at one two three capital D. Okay. Uh, now let's see ls pv command. How many pvs are available here? So we have root vg, hard disk zero, hard disk two are uh, visible. So let's check this one. Yeah. Hard disk two and hard disk three are visible. Okay. So let's check this one. Yeah. Okay. So first. Of all, we'll uh, see which command was recovered. Okay, normal VG, big VG, and scalable VG. Okay. So first, uh, we'll try to convert it to the big and then scalable. Okay. Hello. LSP. So what is the command to create MK a new VG? VG? MK VG or MK. Hello. Okay. Yeah, what is the command to create a new VG? Yeah, MK VG hyphen Y. Okay. Such in VG and H disk one. So this H disk one, uh, sorry, not H disk one. H disk zero is free, right? H disk zero. Okay, so you can see that such in VG created successfully. LS VG and uh, Sachin VG. You can see that uh, complete information is available. So actually, it reads the information from the VGDA. Okay. So you can see that volume group name is Sachin VG. State is active. Read write operation uh, is allowed. Then uh, maximum Elvis can be created 256 and. Uh, Total PPs created 479. Size of the PPs 32. So system has selected it uh, by default. Okay, and uh, quorum it is enabled. Okay, quorum is enabled. And uh, maximum 32 PPs we can add. Maximum value is 256. Let's convert this one into the big VG. To convert that one, ch VG hyphen capital V and the Sachin VG. So if we do the conversion, LS VG Sachin VG, you can see that <clears throat> let's see where is that maximum value is 512 and maximum PV is 128. Correct? 128, 512. Okay. Then 
if you have to convert it to the scalable command is chvg hyphen capital g and the uh, vg name so in vg enter so you can see that the volume group must be varied off during the conversion to the scalable volume group format okay so here you can see that uh, steps are vary of vg then convert and then vary on okay so first thing vary of vg such in vg we need to vary it off then fire the command chvg such in vg After conversion, it cannot be imported into the AIX Pyro 2 or lower version. You would like to convert? Yes. It is changed successfully. LS VG. Sachin VG. Oh, sorry. Vary on VG. Sachin VG. The first thing we need to vary it on and then fire this command. Yeah. LS VG. Okay? Mm -hmm. Clear about this. So mm -hmm. here you can see that maximum PVs can be added 1024. Okay. LVs it is showing 512 because mm -hmm. size of the PVs here added very uh, small actually. That's why LV count is not changed here. But uh, it's uh, 4096 as per the document. Okay. Great. Then uh, next is uh, what? Okay. How to enable and disable the quorum. Okay. So command is chvg hyphen capital Q small y vg name to enable mm, that one and disable hyphen capital Q small n. Okay, so we'll enable and disable that one. So right now it is enabled, right? Let's disable this one chvg hyphen capital Q small n and we search in a vg. Mm. Then LSVG. It is disabled. Correct? And to enable this one, command is CHVG. Why? And then LS. But the what if Quorum is disabled? So in Okay. Uh, disabled, disabled, uh, we are not able to trace. Uh, we are not able to monitor the or trace the VG na, in mm -hmm. case of is disabled. Hello. If, in case anything goes wrong. Okay. Uh, right, okay. right, right. Correct. So it will not monitor the VGD availability. Okay. Okay. okay so even if. Uh, it is less than 50%. Okay. It will not bring your VG off. So it is not checking VG. Okay. If AX is not. Yeah. If VGDA is greater than 50%, then only code you can use the code. Sorry, sorry. If VGDA is less than 50%, then we are not going to monitor the VGD. Hello? Okay. It will get offline. No, quorum quorum will bring your VJ offline automatically. Yeah, because it is already in enabled state, it is continuously monitoring that one. And once the VGDA is less than fifty percent to save okay. your data, okay, to keep your, uh, your data safe, uh, logs it will uh, disable the uh, VGDA. This is the inbuilt tool, but in what case we use this tool? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, basically, look, as I said that. Uh, okay, yes, yeah. One minute, where was that? Okay, if we have one PV, okay, in case of a one PV, two VGD copies are there, correct? Okay. So in that case, quorum is required, okay, because even if one of the VGDA goes bad, in mm. that case, uh, your data is at risk, correct? Mm. Okay, but if you have four hard disks, okay, 
with four hard disks you get four vgds copies okay in that case monitoring is not required actually okay because even if one goes down still it is okay. more than 50% if another goes down it's okay 50% you have still two copies available over there so when you are vg contains less number of disk quorum is required okay great then what do we have here we have here okay let's see what is p factor now here if i fire this command okay we have converted to this scalable vg right so that's cool chvg hyphen p2 and the uh such vg if i fire mm. it will throw the error mm. because the t option is not valid for the scalable volume group as i said that with the scalable volume group uh, p option is available not t option available okay so to the p uh, option we call it as a p factor but in documents you will not find that concept uh, because it is rarely used uh, so for that what we need to do we will do one thing reduce vg such in vg and reduce vg then we will create new vg into vg hyphen y let the sample and uh, let's uh, mm -hmm. it's created so let's be mm -hmm. sample VG. okay mm -hmm. sample age so here 32 and 256 okay and 1016 dps per pv correct if I fire chvg hyphen t2 and the sample vg command, after firing this one, you can see the difference. And the difference is with this 2032 pps per pv can be created, mm -hmm. and maximum pv is 16. Yes. Okay, so it doubles the count of a pp per pv, but it is inversely proportional to the okay got the concept great then for migration one will be let's be so to be here we have and this is 5 gb hard disk and let's be root vg in the root vg it is 4 megabyte okay so okay let's see how to migrate the root vg okay now okay <laughs> okay we'll try this one okay if uh, activity uh, you know is not successful it will bring this alpha down okay so to up that one again it will take some time but we'll try that okay so ls vg hyphen p root vg here uh, hard disk one is present so we'll add hard disk two in that okay to add that one extend vg root vg okay so it is added successfully but this is part of root vg then i'll fire the migrate pv command mm -hmm. slash dev mm -hmm. disk one slash dev disk two okay mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. did not complete all PV partition have not been made up or not found. The physical volume dev HD one was not found in the system database. Test one. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. We'll perform this activity later. Okay. Because, uh, in last, uh, in other trainings, we have migrated it already. Okay. So that's why it is uh, giving the error. But we'll check it later. Okay. So um, yeah, boot yes. list hyphen m normal hyphen o is the command to check the boot list. So hard disk one. Okay is the uh, first boot device if you want to change that one command is uh, boot list hyphen and normal and the new disk name you have to put over here okay great then uh, sample vg okay so ls vg command i'll fire so sample vg is visible and uh, if i fire the export vg sample vg command it will not allow me because it is varied on so first of all we have to vary it off vary of vg sample vg okay and then export okay so once the export is successful you can see that on hard disk zero it is showing none okay because our ODM is not able to read anything on a hard disk zero, okay. But data is still present on a hard disk zero. Clear? And in same machine, we can fire the import vg command. Import vg sample vg with edge disk zero. So for that, import vg. vg hyphen y sample vg as disk one right no no sorry two great so it is successfully imported now you can see that it is back again okay for testing purpose we can export it from the same machine and we can import it on the same machine that's not okay Okay, so today uh, okay. <clears throat> we'll cover the LBM topic. In last session, yeah. we covered the devices, right? No, so no, tell I me don't what have you are understanding about LBM. Logical management is just uh, it's like it's like uh, uh, using the physical devices logically. That that much knowledge, that much is my understanding about the uh, logical world management. Okay, so in AIX okay. also, LVM is available, okay, and uh, AIX LVM is uh, very strong. We don't require any third-party logical okay. manager uh, to manage that one, okay. So in logical volume manager, there are five important concepts, okay. We'll try to uh, uh, cover those five concepts first, okay, okay. and then uh, rules related to the logical volume manager, okay. So, in logical volume manager, first important concept is PV. It stands for physical volume. Physical volume. And this physical volume is nothing but a, our hard disk. Okay. okay. So, the hard disk in a AIX language, we call it as a physical volume. Okay. Then, uh, there is a concept called as PP, that is physical partition physical partition so physical partition is uh, basically it is the block created on a pv okay means if we try to where is there are the shapes okay let's say this is our hard disk okay in ai okay. language this is called as yeah. a pv right Okay, I'll expand this. So physical volume and uh, PV 
and prison partition means what basically uh, inside of this partitions get created like this like this okay so let's say here single partition size is 1 gb single partition size is 1 gb and our pv size is 100 gb 100 gb what does this mean our hard disk size is 100 gb and inside of that physical partitions are present and single physical partition size is 1 gb that means we have 100 physical partitions in this pv this is the meaning okay single yes, yes. size is 1 gb and total count is 100 <coughs> got it okay great then there is a concept called as lp it is a logical partition logical partition and uh, logical partition is basically it is the a layer on top of the physical partition to store the data okay so lp is equal to pp size wise and count wise size wise and count wise this is the simple rule okay mm. means in this diagram this is our pp right this is our pp so if the pp size is 1 gb that means on top of this we can mm. configure the lp which would be of size of 1 gb only okay and if we have 100 pp count that means we can create 100 lps this is the meaning okay yeah then next one is logical volume logical volume now what is logical volume so logical volume it is the collection of collection of one or more PPs to store data to store data it is a collection of one or more PPs to store the okay. data this is the simple definition of this one means in this diagram if I want to create the, uh, let's say LB of size 3 GB so system will take these three partitions okay and combining this one, I will be able to create the LB. This is the mini. Okay. LB yes. of 3 GB size. Clear about this? Great. And all this is present under the VG. So VG, it stands for volume group. VG stands for volume group. So volume group, it is the collection of... Okay one or more PVs. This is a collection of one or more PVs. Okay, to that we call it as a uh, volume group. Means in this example, if I add one more hard disk, let's say this is also one of the hard disk available, and it is present inside of, it is present inside of this VG. Okay. So, so this is called as a volume group. Volume group. So to understand the LVM, you should have a good understanding of these five concepts. Okay? These five concepts. Physical volume, physical partition, logical partition, logical yeah. volume, and volume group. Okay. Okay. Wait. So let's see the uh, rules related to the uh, logical volume manager. Okay? So there are few or rules we have to follow while configuring this one so first rule is pp is equal to lp size wise and count wise so mm -hmm. we have already covered this rule okay if the pp size is 1 gb then lp size is also 1 gb and the count is 100 then lp count is also 100 okay then in a vg in a vg 1016 PPs per PV are allowed. Okay. 
So in a VG, maximum 1016 PP per PV are allowed. We can configure maximum yes. 1016. Third rule is in a VG, maximum 32 PVs yes. are okay. allowed. Okay, in AI, in a VG, we can add maximum 32 PVs. Okay, so minimum one, maximum 32. Then fourth one is in a VG, maximum 256 LVs are allowed. So in AIX, maximum 256 LVs uh, can be created with the default uh, volume group. Okay, so these are the limitations. Then in a VG, minimum 1 MB and a maximum mm -hmm. 1 GB PP size allowed. Okay, PP size allowed. So in a VG, uh, minimum 1 MB also PP size mm -hmm. we can have or maximum 1 GB. So uh, we can uh, have the number in a multiple of 2. So 1 MB, 2 MB, 4 MB, 8 MB, 16 MB. 32 MB, 64, 128, 256, 512, and 1 GB. These numbers are supported. Okay. Then in a VG, we can have different size of PVs. Okay. So it is not uh, okay. compulsory to have the same size of PVs in a VG. We can have a different uh, size of PV is also in a VG. Okay. Then in a VG, PP size remains mm -hmm. same throughout, throughout VG. Okay. Means uh, we cannot. Change it dynamically. Okay, we cannot change it dynamically. So once okay. it is set, we cannot change it. If you want to change that one, okay, uh, in that case we have to destroy the VG completely and we have to recreate it. Okay, great. Then uh, eight one is in a VG. Uh, mm. PP size is static. Okay, so PP size is fixed. Okay, we cannot uh, change the size of it. Okay, and uh, mm. if you want to change that one again, as I said, that we have to destroy the VGA and we need to uh, recreate that one. Okay, mm. then. LB, okay, logical mm -hmm. volume can span across multiple PVs provided PVs are part of same VG. Provided PVs are part of same VG. Means uh, we can have a LB from multiple PVs, okay. okay, but those PVs should be a part of same VG, okay. We cannot have a, uh, you know, same PV in multiple VG, okay. So that is the 10th rule. Okay. PV cannot be shared between VGs, okay, between <laughs> Any doubt in these 10 rules? Easy to understand, right? So let's see the hierarchy, how it works actually. So in a hierarchy, I'll uh, draw this one. So basically, if we have a PV, okay, uh, for a PV, uh, in a PV, uh, PP is equal to LP, size wise, 
<coughs> and uh, ground white okay and uh, then lv on top of the lv we create the file system and then on top of the file system mm. we get the directory then we get the directory then we get the file okay and all this is present under the all this is present bg okay volume group so this is the relationship how it works yes sir. so from here to here then here okay see, it is connected got it well so commands related to the vg so to understand the command sorry to understand the lvm first command is lsvg uh, it shows uh, to list vgs available in aix okay second command is lspv to list pvs available in aix so okay so lsvg lspv then uh, lsvg and the vg name okay it uh, shows the properties of a vg to list properties of vg lsvg vg name if you want to see how many pvs are present inside of the vg hyphen p flag we have to use vg name so to list pvs inside vg then lsvg hyphen l vg name to list lvs present inside of a vg okay so this lv inside vg if you want to create a new vg command is mkvg mk is mk. by using this one you can create a new vg okay so to create new vg in aix mkvg is the command then if you want to perform some changes in a vg chvg uh, is the command chvg to change vg attributes i would say okay then add command is if you want to increase the size of a vg command is extend the vg and the vg name and the pv name okay if you want to add a new pv inside of a vg then extend vg is the command okay to increase add of vg then uh if you want to uh, decrease the size of this uh, reduce vg is the command reduce vg vg name and the pv name okay and the pv name so to uh, remove pv and interesting thing about this one uh by using this one we can delete it also delete to delete vg mm -hmm. so by using reduce vg command we can reduce the size of the vg and we can delete the vg also okay, okay. so how it works so vg it is a collection of one or more pvs right so if we remove the last okay. pv from the vg it will get deleted automatically okay yeah that way it was so there is no uh, rm vg command <coughs> command is reduce vg to delete the vg okay great then uh, vary on vg vg name to bring vg offline vg online sorry online okay and uh, vary of 
VGVT name to bring VGVT offline. Okay, so sometimes for some activities we have to uh, bring it online offline. Okay, then uh, if you want to mirror the VG, you can perform the mirroring also. So mirror VG uh, command is available for the mirroring. And uh, if you want to break that one, then unmirror VG is the command. Unmirror VG. Okay. Then fourteenth command is if uh, you want to uh, list the LVs, LS LV LV name is the command. Okay, to get the LV information to to get LV. Information. Fifteenth one. If you want to create the LV, MKLV is the command. MKLV to create new LV. To create new LV. Okay. The sixteenth one is a CHLV. Mm -hmm. CHLV to create. Sorry. To Change LV attributes and the seventeenth command is RMLV. So if you fire the RMLV, you can uh, remove the LV, remove LV. Okay. Eighteenth one is if you want to expand the size of it. So extend LV command is available to expand. Size of okay. So uh, let's do the practical of all these commands. So here, ls vg. So you can see that we have a root vg and a test vg. Okay, two vgs are visible. Then uh, I'll fire ls pv command. So hard disk zero, hard disk one. So in hard disk zero. Root VG is configured, and in hard disk one, test VG is configured. Okay, so in a hard disk zero, so if I fire ls VG uh, root VG, it will show the complete properties of a VG. You can see that volume group name, volume group name is root VG. This okay. is the identifier. Size of the PP is 120 MB. Then uh, total PP is 546, mm -hmm. and free PP is. 254 and used PP is 292. Means uh, data is or the LV is configured on top of this, and these are the free PP is available. Okay, then uh, number of LV is available in this 19. Open LV is means mounted LV is uh, 11. Okay, then uh, VG descriptor area, then stale PP and uh, stale PP. Then maximum PP is per uh, VG 32512. Maximum PP is per PV 1016. Okay, so these are the things we have covered in our rule. Yeah, no, actually no, this is the first time I am I am one week since so okay. yeah, it is complicated. So actually I have to go through all these commands and try try myself only. So I will do it. Okay. Yes. Any doubt? Uh, this are this is the first time i'm uh, thinking the ax is complicated a little bit so i have to uh, have to study and uh, practice this command uh, right so right i'm just showing you uh, how to execute that one okay you, no doubt you have to do the practical uh, by your own yes Sure, sure, sure. So I will finish this uh, one. Okay, I'll show you all these eighteen commands. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So lsvg hyphen p root vg. So you can see that uh, in a root vg only hard disk one uh, hard disk zero is available. State is active. These are the total pps and these are the free pps available. And this is the distribution of a hard disk. Okay. So basically in AIX hard disk is divided into five parts. Okay. So uh, this is the uh, center actually, okay, and this is the uh, middle, and this is the outer, okay. So this we call it as outer edge. Then this is the outer middle, 
then this is middle this this is inner middle and this is the inner edge okay this way we uh, see it okay and uh, ls vg yes, l is root vg to get the information about the lvs present inside of a vg okay so in root vg all these lvs are available clear hello yeah yeah then if you want to create a vg command is mkvg so you can read the man page of it mm -hmm. uh, man mkvg to create a volume group okay different different flags are available so go through that one <coughs> here we have two pv uh, rd0 and rd1 okay so to create a volume group we have to free one of the hard disk so i'll uh, delete this test vg okay so to delete that one command is uh, reduce vg test vg test disk one unable to find volume group test vg oh sorry uh T capital okay so it is deleted successfully and if i fire this one now you can see that hard disk one is free right mm -hmm. so to create that one mkvg mm -hmm. even y then let's say sachin pg and h disk one h disk one okay enter this and you can see that uh, such an vg is created successfully ls pv it is active also. okay so this way uh, we can create the vg so ls vg h vg or ls vg such an vg and uh, this is the complete for the volume group okay now how do you use this chvg so uh, just for your information i'll show you that one right now you can see that this core of the s2 it is showing enabled right so if i fire yes. chvg item capital q small m such in vg so i'll be able to disable that one and then you can see that it is yes sir yes. Correct. So I can disable it. So I will just enable it again. U N hyphen Y and such and such. So this way you can delete it out. Clear? Then uh, extend VG VG to TV name. So for that we need to reduce this uh, so reduce uh, vg section vg which is one reduce the size of vg so uh, how to use this extend one so we'll use this extend vg to yes. vg one i'll add this as this one to vg okay you can see that lspv at this one is part of root vg right great so this way uh, we can reduce the size of it we can extend the size of it got it then uh, i will uh, reduce it again reduce vg root vg and this one after reducing the size of a vg mm -hmm. Let's, uh, let's create new one. Uh, so how much amount did you reduce? Please. Hello. Why? Yeah, yeah. Reducing means what is the difference between extend and reduce? And if you see, it Hello? is active now, right? Then which is active. So if you take it off. Okay. Yeah. Hello.
Okay, extent is yeah. In a single VG, maximum 32 PVs we can add, right? So here uh, only one disc was there. Mm. Okay, and after extending that one, two disc uh, was there, right? Mm. Okay, so this way we can add up to 32 mm. disc drives into single. Disc. <laughs> okay, so hard disk. When we add the hard disk, it increases the size of the VG also, right? And when we remove that one, it reduces the size of the VG. Okay? Mm -hmm. And it out? Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, batch of VG. Such in VG. Value of VG. Such in VG. So if I fire LSPV again, you can see that it was active. Now mm -hmm. it is inactive. Okay? So you can uh, vary down, vary on VG, such in VG, and at this PV, you can see that it is active now. Okay. Great. Then uh, if you want to create a mirror of the VG, you can create that one. Okay. And you can unmirror also. So I'll just show you the man page of this man mirror VG. <coughs> So mirrors all the logical volumes that exist on a given volume group. Okay. So here we can try to uh, do the mirroring of a uh, root VG. For that we need to reduce the reduce VG such in VG and this one. And then we have to add it into the root VG. So extend VG root VG. As this okay, so it is extended now. So, mirror VG for mirroring, it takes some time. If everything is fine, it would not give any error. What is try to mirror when, when we use mirroring, mirroring means it's like the which we are using it as a red fire. That is the duplication. Hello? Root. Such a red one. Okay. This is the. And here, for the topaz. Okay. Is the data data automatically get replicated? Hello? Yeah, it's a red one actually. It automatically get replicated. This is if you have the two hard disks. It's kind of. And if you are using a if you create a logical volume of using the two hard disks, then data will automatically replicate to two two physical volumes, right? Na, that is the use of this method. Right. Okay. Right. Yes. Okay. Correct. Right. Okay, so something is wrong with the mirroring of this. Okay, it has given uh, the error. Uh, if the HD file is a good logical volume, please run the CHDV, mm -hmm. I and a lot of uh, stuff is there. Okay, but uh, LSVG, LSVG hyphen V, okay. and uh, root VG. Uh, you can see that mirroring is not successful because hard disk one okay. total PP is 546 and a free 546. Mm. Okay, so mirroring uh, is not successful here. Got it? Great. So while doing practical, uh, you can try uh, this mirroring mm. concept. Okay, and uh, mm. let's see how to create this LV actually on top of this. So uh, LSVG. Hyphen L root VG and fire. So all these are the LVs. You can see the names here. Okay, all these are the LVs. S L V zero 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 one two three four five things like this. So let's select this F S L V one L S L V and the name. So this is the property of a LV. Okay. So mm -hmm. 
I'll just uh, show you the example uh, how to use this CHLV. So to use this CHLV hyphen N and the uh, new name would be let's say test LV mm -hmm. and then old name will use this one. Mm -hmm. So here LSLV you can see that mm -hmm. we have changed it to the test LV. Okay. What was the name? FSLV01. So we have changed it by using the CHLV mm -hmm. command. Okay. Then uh, if you have to create the LV, you can create it by using the MKLV command. The best way is to read the man page first. Okay. And uh, even if you don't remember the flags, if you fire the MKLV, it will show you all the flags available with this. Okay. So MKLV hyphen uh, basically type T is the the flag okay to use the where is that T T T T T T T what T yeah it was uh, T or V okay yeah t is there uh, t type okay here so jfs2 jfs2 and then hyphen uh, y let's mm -hmm. say sachin lv and then vg name in which vg you want to create that so i want to create it under root vg and the number of lps you want to create so uh, what size of uh, LV you want to create? I want to create it uh, of size 512 MB. So I'll give the value for here because my single LP size is 128 MB. Okay. So 128 into 4, 512 MB. Okay. Yeah. Enter. Your LV is available. LS. LS VG. And uh, root V. Sorry, mm. let's uh, VG hyphen L and root V. Okay, so section L V is created successfully here, right? So this is the command MKLV hyphen D J F S two. Okay, hyphen Y section L V root V G four. Then uh, we'll extend this one extend L V. Extend L V and then uh, section lv and 10 okay the command sorry extend lv so in lv and 10 so add extra 10 lp no. inside of this so mm -hmm. extend lv section mm -hmm. lv 10 okay so it is extended successfully earlier only four uh, pps was there okay and uh, now in this okay. 14 right this way we expand this one and to remove this rmlv section lv is the command you can see that do you wish to continue all data contained a logical volume will be destroyed okay mm -hmm. so to delete this one yes i want to delete this delete it mm -hmm. successfully so, I reduce you. Great. Uh, let's see the uh, file system. Okay. okay. We're done with the uh, part two. Okay. Let's see the file system part. File system. Uh, tell me why file system is required. The, what is your understanding about the, file? It contains the files which is user OS operating system. We just paging or segmentation. Mm -hmm. These are the files used by the OS mm -hmm. operating system. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. 
so this is my definition actually okay uh, it is a software which allows us to store the data in a structured way on a hard disk okay so basically uh, when we attach a hard disk to any operating system mm. we get a raw disk and we format that disk with the uh, file system right so what happens actually after format uh, formatting that one so it allows us to store the data mm. in a structured way and once the file system is created it becomes easy to do the read and write on a file system it becomes easy to search the data also mm. okay so it uses the different different algorithms okay so uh, in a file system two important uh, concepts are inode and the super block inode and the super block okay so basically inode it uh, it contains the a uh, metadata of file okay it contains the metadata of a file means when it was created and the what was the uh, modification date okay so and what what is the size of the uh, uh, file it, complete information we get it from the inode and the super block basically it is the first block it is the first block block contain the metadata of metadata of file system okay so i know it contains the metadata of file and super mm -hmm. block it contains the metadata of a mm -hmm. file system okay then in ax mm -hmm. four file systems are supported okay uh four file systems are supported first one is the jfs that is the journaled file system journaled file system then jfs2 journal it is enhanced uh, journal file enhanced journal file system then uh, third one is the nfs which is network file system okay network file system and then fourth one is the cd rom fs Mm. Serial so MFS. Okay. So these four file systems are supported in a operating system. Okay. Now um, there is a uh, in JFS JFS two how these blocks are created and I know and super block mm -hmm. are stored. So I'll use the MS Paint again. Okay. So I'll use the file and the new here. I'll create new one. Save this first. Uh, yeah so let's say this is our file system okay so when we format this okay mm -hmm. what happens actually it creates the blocks like this okay it creates the blocks like this so this square one is a block actually Okay, like this blocks uh, get created. Okay, and um, first block is always the super block. Okay, so first block is always the super block, which contains the metadata of a file system. Okay, and when we create a, a file inside of a file system, okay, let's say file one, for a file. it uh, allocates the i node it allocates the i node okay so file information will be available over here mm -hmm. okay even if we cre create the directory in a unix okay uh, it will be treated as a file mm -hmm. so in unix there is a rule that it uh, it, uh, it treats everything as a file okay 
so for a directory also we get the directory for directory also we get the mm -hmm. okay now interesting thing over here is this block is a zeroth block okay this is the first block this is the second block third one this way uh, blocks are available okay let's say uh, this one is the 31st block let's say okay so what happens actually in aix it keeps the one more copy of a mm -hmm. super block one more copy of a super block at 31st block okay so it is copy of super block now why super block copy is available because if the super block is corrupt will not be able to access the file system okay so if you want to recover the super block you can use this copy of the super block so command for that is uh, before that let's say here lb name is uh, Sachin. Okay, Sachin LB. So to recover that one command is dd and uh, gt then uh, bs equal to 4k count mm. it starts with 1 okay count equal to 1 then skip 31 6 1 and input file equal to slash dev slash search in lv and output file slash dev search in lv okay so we have to fire this command to recover the super block okay so how it uh, reads the information so count it starts with one okay block it starts with zero but count also starts with one okay when we start the count from one this is the 32nd block okay. right so skip the 31st and seek the one and recover yes. the file okay. system this is the meaning okay <clears throat> got the concept Then, internal question is, what is the difference between difference between JFS and JFS2? Okay, so let's see the difference. JFS it stands for Journal File System, and JFS2 it is the enhanced version of the JFS. Okay, so first is the inode size. This is first is the inode size. So in JFS, it is 128 bytes. Can you hear me? Yeah, 512 bytes. Then uh, inode creation here it is uh, static. And with JFS2, it is a dynamic. Okay, it is dynamic. Then, maximum file size. JFS, yes. maximum file size allowed is 64 GB. And with JFS2, 4 petabyte. Okay, petabyte. Then, uh, maximum file system size. It is 1 TB here for petabyte. Okay, so JFS2, of course, it's the enhanced version, so maximum size is 4 petabyte, there 1 terabyte. Then uh, JFS log. Okay, so for the JFS file system, it gets uh, log, gets stored in the HD8. These are this is the system defined LB. And here it stores the log in HD8 and as well as it creates its own log 
in its own VG. So that we call it as a inline lock for extra security. Okay. And uh, here compression compression speaker is uh, basically available. Yes. In JFS2 it is not available. Okay. In JFS2 we cannot compress the files. Okay. Okay. Clear about this? So this is yes, also yes. one of the important integral question in AI. So what is the difference between the JFS and JFS2? Okay. Clear about this? Great. So let's see the file system uh, related commands. So file system related commands are. Uh, The first command uh, we can use the uh, df hyphen g to see the mounted file systems in AIX. In AIX, to create the file system, crfs is the command. Then, uh, to make the changes to increase or decrease the size of the file system, chfs command is also available. Then, um, fourth one. To list the file system, lsfs a okay, it will list you all the file system created in AIX operating system. Then, if you want to remove that one, rmfs command is uh, also available. So, when you remove the file system, actually delete the LV also, okay. Then, um, rmfs, then mount to mount the file system to bring the file system online. And you mount, you mount to unmount the file system. Okay. Then, at one mm. is uh, FSCK. If you want to perform the file system check, command is FSCK file system check. Okay. And uh, ninth one is the I stack. If you want to read the inode information of a file, command is I stack. Okay. <coughs> And um, to recover the corrupt number block, command is. Yeah, but when we create a file system, okay. means what is the use of creating file system? So these are the commands for the file system. Hello? Any doubt for the, in the file system? Okay. okay. Yeah, got the got your question. Basically, why file system is required? If we try to store the data on a raw disk, okay, okay. we'll be able to store only one file, okay. We'll not be able to store multiple files because there is no indexing okay. available in a, a raw disk, okay. When we uh, create a file system, okay, we can store the uh, multiple files, okay, and it gets stored in a structured way, okay. So finding that uh, data like is also in, uh, we, we are uh, calling in database. Uh, when we yeah. have file system available, it's, it's okay. Like indexing. That's why file system. But we to have to okay. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Basically, in a searching, inode plays very important role. Okay. okay. So with each file, we get the inode. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's why searching becomes easy. Yeah, yeah. It does not scan the entire hard disk. It just reads the inode and gives you the file. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got it? Great. So let's access this one and fire a few commands. Okay. So where is our server? Select AX remote. Let's create some file system on a sample VG. Okay, so to create a file system, mm -hmm. so the best way is to read the man page and then uh, from the man page you can execute the command or uh, uh, you can use the smitty also. Okay, the so first thing I will just show you smitty mklv volume group we have to select. I want to create this one into the sample VG. Mm -hmm. Okay, then here, let's say S1 is the logical volume name. How many logical partitions you want to add into it? Let's say 10. Okay, single uh, 
TP size is uh, 32, so it's, it would be 320 MB. And what type of uh, LB? So JFS2 file system, I I'm going to create on it. Okay. So this is what we have to select and enter. Specified object class cannot be because the file system is full, unable to access device configuration database. Oh. This is the error, it is showing 100%. CHFS. Hyphen A. So I'll increase the size of it. Okay. Size. That's. Somebody has migrated. Uh, we have that much space available. <laughs> yeah, successfully correct. Df hyphen p. So space is available now. Okay. Now we'll create it. So NKLV. First of all, LV we have to create. FK4 sample VG. And then uh, H1 is our logical volume name, number of logical partitions we want to add into it, 10 and the type JFS2 enter successfully created okay then smithy crfs okay on top of lv let's create the file system so enhanced journal file system we want to create and second option we need to select here that add an enhanced journal file system on a previously defined logical volume okay and here as before you will find the s1 because we have created s1 for the jfs2 only mount point slash s1 okay then mount automatically at system restart yes or no yes okay read write version permission successfully we have to do hmm. so escape six you can see that the back end uh, complete script is available okay but for that we require hyphen d and hyphen m flag okay hmm. so let's hmm. mount it mount this one df hyphen g s1 is successfully mounted okay if you want to go to the s1 you can go here and then you are good to create the directories and the files so present working directory is latches one clear about this if you want to increase the size of this one ch fs hyphen a size equal to plus let's say 1g 1gb and uh, flash h1 <coughs> file system successfully increase so on the fly you can increase the size of the file system downtime is not required okay lsfs hyphen a to list the file system so it will list all the file systems uh, available in ax mounted and mounted all file systems okay if i fire the rmfs again okay, right now in this directory so let's see rmfs slash s1 what will happen it is currently mounted so first of all i have to unmount it unmount slash s1 okay and then rmfs slash s1 you can clearly see that um, logical volume s1 is also removed okay so uh, lb uh, was bounded with the uh, <coughs> file system and when we try to delete that one yes um, it deletes the LB also. Okay. DD. Okay. And then what we have ISTAT and FSK. So, DF hyphen G. If I fire FSK on slash admin, it 
we did this one current volume is this one current amounted so it will uh, not perform any activity on this it will just uh, scan the file system okay performing only read only processing okay it does not produce any dependable result. so basically if you are facing any issue with the file system best way is to unmount that one then run the fsck and then mount that one. okay so fsck will also try to you know uh, recover the file system okay great and i stat is basically what we'll do cd slash data and let's mm -hmm. the files are there i stat uh for doc mm -hmm. so it will give the directory information okay how many links are there and what is the of the uh, file uh, when it was updated when it was modified when it was accessed complete information you get it from here okay dd 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 okay dd for dd we need to create the lv so mklv is the command mklv hyphen y and the name we need to specify uh, the name here let's say x2 hyphen t actually hyphen t we need to specify for hyphen t JFS2 hyphen Y S2 then uh, VG name is I think V and for sample V right what do we have here sample yeah MKLV hyphen hyphen T JFS2 hyphen Y Let's do sample B and um, size. We just need to specify the size of it. So 2G. Okay, test is created successfully. Okay, then CRFS hyphen D. Then uh, device is. Uh, S2, yeah, slash dev S2 and the mount point S2. Okay, so we didn't specify the file type dev S2 hyphen B slash dev. Two, M. Okay, and then mount last mm. two. Okay, this way we have created file system. And to recover that one, if something is wrong, okay, in that case, BS equal to 4K count. Equal to count equal to one, and then uh, sick equal thirty one. Skip equal to one. Ef input file slash dev s two output file slash dev. Mm -hmm. So everything is fine. 1 plus 0 records in, 1 plus 0 records out. So yeah. nothing was wrong with that. So that's why um, yes. there is nothing to recover, right? Okay, but this way we can fire the command. Clear about this? Okay, great. So let's start uh, the devices topic. Okay, so in last session we have covered the paging space. Okay, so today we'll focus on devices. So devices, uh, it plays very important role in the IBM AI because AI it is the proprietary operating system of the IBM, which gets installed only on the proprietary hardware of the IBM. 
okay so if you want to purchase any new device for the power hardware compulsory you have to purchase it from the ibm itself okay so uh, in devices uh, there are three types of devices available nowadays in it industry three types are available device first type is the physical one physical device means which we can see which we can touch which we can feel okay then there is a, a logical device logical device means what uh, when we attach that physical device into the operating system in the operating system will be able to see the device okay so we can use that device but we cannot touch that device right because uh, it is part of operating system okay and then virtual device virtual device means what when we uh, do the virtualization of the physical devices we get multiple logical devices over there on top of the single physical okay so example uh, over here is uh, let's say we have a 300 gb hard disk okay when we connect it to the operating system we'll be able to see the 300 gb hard disk on a operating system but when we create partitions on top of it okay let's say like 100 gb 100 gb and 100 gb so here three partitions are there so virtually uh, we think that we have three different hard drives but actually we have a single hard drive single hard drive goes down all these 100 100 gb hard drives will be down right okay so in these uh, physical logical and virtual again there are uh, two types actually okay first one is the uh, block device and uh, second one is the character device character device in block device basically to work with the block device file system is required file system is required okay and for character device uh, uh, no file system required example of uh, this one is uh, hard disk so without file system we cannot store the data on top of the hard disk right and character device means tape device we can say on a tape we don't have to create the file system to store the data okay so here uh, random access we get so access is kind of faster random access and uh, here we get the serial access so it's low access okay serial access to the data then third one is it is faster and character device it is low okay so you don't get performance from the character device and fourth one cost wise it is costly and character device it is cost effective very cheap available in the market cost effective here let's see the physical device and that physical device logical name in ai logical name in ai so how to identify devices in AIX operating system. Okay. So if you have a physical hard disk, okay, in AIX, logical name for the hard disk is H disk. Okay. So H disk N, N means number. Okay. So example over here in AIX, how it is visible? AI, hard disk 0 or H disk 1, H disk 2, like that. Uh, we can identify the disk drive. Okay. Then, um, Ethernet, Ethernet, so for Ethernet in AIX, logical name is ENT, okay, and N means number. So, example over here, ENT 0, ENT 1, okay, this way we can identify mm -hmm. that, okay. Then, uh, motherboard, so for motherboard in AIX, there is a logical name, SIS plan. Mm -hmm. This planner okay so there is only one planner board so we get this is planner zero okay for that then uh, memory for a memory mem n okay and example over here mem zero 
mm one physical ram okay physical ram okay then uh, processor so processor is also hba cards we use and for hba uh, logical name in ax is the fcx and okay example over here is fcs0 fcs1 fcs2 okay <clears throat> Fiber channels good. Okay. Then uh, for USB universal serial bus, here we get the name USB um, and example USB zero USB one like that. Okay. What else? Anything missing? Oh, Ethernet. We are done. Yeah. Tape for a tape. Uh, in AIX, logical name is RMT. Okay, RMT. And so, example is RMT 0, RMT 1, like that. Yeah, for CD DVD, it's uh, CD 0. Okay. Yeah. In, a, uh, in devices, we have a topic uh, called as a predefined uh, database and uh, customized database. Okay, predefined database and customized database. So, predefined database means what? So, basically, when we do the installation of the AIX operating system, it installs the uh, default set of device drivers. Okay, so it is the set of device drivers supported by AIX operating system okay and um, customized data means, means what it is the set of device drivers installed in AIX operating system okay AIX operating system mm -hmm. what is the meaning of this one so even if the device is not available even if the device is have a seat okay. Mm -hmm. okay so even if the device is not installed okay uh, we get the device drivers in the predefined database mm -hmm. okay and when we do the installation of the uh, software, okay, uh, it is available in a customized database. That is the meaning of this. So to check the predefined database, command is ls lsdev hyphen capital P small C and uh, okay. device type device type, okay. And in uh, customized database, basically, LSDAV, hyphen capital C, small c, and the device type. Okay. Device type. Okay. So this way we can identify, no, what is it? we can check type? customized type database and the predefined database. Okay. Okay, device type means uh, there are types available like uh, uh, that's a disk. Disk is the type. Okay, then adapter. In the adapter, it shows you the uh, Ethernet adapter and the HBA adapter. Okay, then uh, tape. Tape is the also one of the device type. Okay, so let's see the uh, uh, commands related to the devices. Okay. So there are almost 14 commands available. Let's see one by one commands. So first command is the PRT con. 
to get the complete configuration of the power hardware. So PRD configuration it shows you the PRD config shows you the processor, how many cores are there, how much RAM is there, and how many hard drives are connected, and how many uh, adapters are there. Complete info is available. Practically, I'll show you that one also. LS conf also shows you the same output. Okay, so there is no uh, difference in the output of the LS conf and the uh, PRD conf. Then. Uh, to detect new devices in AI, command is CFGNGR. If you attach a new device to the AI, to detect that one, configuration manager, okay, CFGNGR is the command. Then LSPV, LSPV is required, uh, LSPV shows the hard disk connected to the system. It's a list physical volume, okay. Are you there? Then LS Dave will list all the devices connected to the AIX operating system. Okay, <laughs> and we have seen these commands LS Dave hyphen C small C and the device type. Okay, and uh, Ash LS Dave. Okay. But for all these commands, root login is required, no? Device type. Hello? Okay. Yeah. Then, yeah, yeah, root login is required. Okay, and uh, and then uh, chdev command to change the characteristics of a command, you can use the chdev. Okay, then hash rmdev if you want to remove the device from the AIX rmdev command, you can use. Okay. Then uh, here in rmdev, hyphen l, if you give hyphen l, you can disable the device, okay, device name. And uh, rmdev hyphen dl, device underscore name, uh, hyphen dl, by using this one, you can, uh, able, you can remove that one, okay. Then to see the hardware error, software error, network related error command is ERRPT to see the errors in AI operating system. ERRPT is the command. Okay. Then if you want to see the description of the error, command is ERRPT, hyphen capital A, small j, and identity fire. Okay. And 13th one is the DAG in AIX DAG command is also available. Okay, so these are the uh, commands uh, related to the devices. Okay, it's a LB LSP major. Uh, to list the uh, major number and minor number, so I will cover that one uh, while doing practical. Okay, so have you written these commands? Okay, okay, not a problem, not a problem. So, uh, okay. there is a concept called as major number and minor number. So, let's cover that concept also so that we'll be able to uh, see the uh, practical. Okay, so. Major number is the major number basically major number is referred by the uh, ODM. Okay, so ODM uh, refers major number and uh, minor number number to work with devices we work with devices okay so major number is uh, basically it is a number associated with it is a number associated with uh, device type device type okay and a minor number minor number 
is basically it is a number associated with device with number of devices of same type same type okay so simple example of this one is major number and minor number so let's say in ax uh, three hard drives are there okay and uh, three hard drives are there with name h disk 0 h disk 1 and h disk 2 okay and uh, with H disk, let's say there is a major number 22 and minor number is 0. For H disk 1, major number would remain same, okay? Yes. And let's say minor number is 1 over here. And uh, here, again 22, 2. So you can see that this 22 is the major number. So it is a number associated with the device type, okay? So our device type is the disk. So for a disk in a... AI is let's say 22 number is there, okay, and here we have three hard drives, so here 0, 1, 2, so to work with the hard disk 0, ODM will use 22 comma 0 number, okay, yes. to work with hard disk 1, it will use 22 comma 1, yes. and with hard disk 2, 22 comma 2, that way ODM refers the, uh, or uh, uses the device, so ODM it is object data manager, it is the registry of AIX operating system, okay. Object data <coughs> manager. Got it? Yeah. Great. So we'll see all these commands. Okay. So for that, first thing we'll take the uh, pre session of the AIX server. AIX mode right there. Okay. And we'll log into what this. Yes, I want to see what is the password of root because so I want to root. execute this command. My same for me. Password. So, Are you able to see the uh, putty session? Okay, okay Google A on G capital. Okay, teacher. Okay. Okay, so recently I have, recently I have changed that one to the uh, okay. Google 11. Okay, G capital. Okay, I should. Okay, so basically we keep on changing uh, after every two days or three days. If you are unable to access that one, you can WhatsApp me anytime. I'll share the password. Okay. Yeah, great. So first thing, PRTCon. Okay. So PRTCon five more. I'll fire the command here. So PRTCon is the print configuration. It gives the complete information of the system. So you can see that. This is the system model name that is IBM 9111285, mm. machine serial number, then processor type, implementation version, and uh, then CPU type, kernel type, and power information. So, complete info is available. RAM we have with this 2 GB around, okay. Then, network information is a uh, host, uh, host name, then IP address, subnet mask, and the gateway, okay. So, IP address of the machine uh, we have allocated 0 0.151 to this, then. Uh, Paging space to 56 MB, and uh, here we have two hard drives, hard disk 0 and hard disk 1, and rest of the uh, device is connected to it. Okay, so okay. by using this one, it shows the complete system information. Same same output we get with the LSCon. Okay, LSCon that is list configuration. Okay, same output. Yes. Right. Yes. No difference. Same output. Now, what I'll do, I'll fire the LSPV command. So, LSPV, you can see that hard disk 0 and hard disk 1, two hard drives are present over here, right? Okay, so uh, what I'll do, I'll delete the hard disk 1, okay, and we'll try to detect this hard disk by using the CFGMGR command. So, CFGMGR is required to detect a new device, correct? So, uh, to delete this one, first of all, I have to use uh, this export. Uh, command which promotes the value of instead of uh, I will vary it off 
vary of music test Okay. And then I'll fire the export. Okay. Okay. Now my PV is free. Okay. What I'll do? RM Dev. So here you can see we have covered this command, right? RM Dev also. Tenth command. But all the data so will also be lost. Hyphen TS. Edge disk. Edge disk one. Enter. <clears throat> So if everything is fine, it will okay. be deleted successfully. Yeah, but the data, okay. Uh, this is a physical disk, not this uh, zero and disk two are the right. this one are right. the physical disk. So we are deleting correct. From the correct. The when we delete that one, uh, from the point data of will also be lost. But still, the, all the data will get lost if you delete the okay, so disk. Okay, so here is correct. Okay. Okay, so the basically uh, in hard disk zero we have our operating system. Okay, and in <coughs> hard disk one uh, okay. we configured the another vision. Nothing was there. Okay, so in AI what happens actually when we uh, remove a hard disk from a VG? Okay, at that time it uh, deletes the okay. data present in the hard disk. Okay, when we take okay. it uh, off that particular VG. Okay. Uh, at that time only it deletes mm -hmm. the data. Okay, RM day it removes the entry of the hard disk from no? the ODM. Okay, got that? Yeah. So LSP you can see that we have only one disk now. Okay, so what is the command to detect a new device in AX? Yeah, perfect. So it is still going on. Here's the MGR. Okay. Okay. So command is successful. Let's see this one. So you can see that hard disk one is detected again. Okay, so we removed it by using the uh, RM dev command, and we have detected it by using the CFJMJR command. Okay, so uh, there is a command ls dev. Ls dev. I'll use the pipe more. So all these devices are available. So you can see that CD zero. So it's nothing but a CD DVD ROM. Okay. Then uh, EN0, EN1, EN2, ENT0, ENT1, ENT2. So in the example, we have seen the ENT0 also. So these are the physical Ethernet ports. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, then uh, FCS0. So one uh, fiber channel adapter is also connected mm -hmm. to it. So you can see that HBA. Okay. FCS0, fiber channel adapter. Then uh, MEM0, okay. that means memory. Right. Then... Uh, Hard disk, you can see that H disk one, H disk two. Okay, this way we identify the devices. Then about uh, processes, uh, uh, these are the PCI slots actually. Okay, so we have almost uh, 11 PCI slots. Okay. Then uh, a proc zero, proc two. So it's a there are it's a uh, dual core processor. Okay, that's why proc zero and proc two is visible here. So that way we identify the devices in AIX operating system. Okay. Uh, then we'll fire this command lsdev hyphen capital P small p and the device type yes. disk. So here you can see that <coughs> all these type of disk drives are supported in AI. That is the name. Okay. This type of disk drives are supported in AI. So this is the output that this type of tapes are supporting or these tapes are actually attached LSDF to the server. hyphen capital P. Hello? Small c, if I fire the tape command here, so mm -hmm. all these type of uh, okay. tapes are also supported in AI. <coughs> that is the way. Okay. Uh, 
right right <coughs> okay and uh, if you fire this uh, okay I'll, I'll show you one example I, if i type disk over here okay it will show me all supported uh, disk drives in ax okay and if i fire the lsdev hyphen capital c small c okay and the disk it will show me only um, three disk drives 0 1 2 because uh, zero is the uh, zero and one these are the local hard drive and hard disk two it is coming from the san actually okay so this is okay, part okay. of the customized database okay in customized database only three hard drives are available so definition is it is the database of all installed devices drivers right so these devices drivers are installed that's why output is visible like this got it <clears throat> great then uh, i forgot to cover the command over here that command is ls cfg hyphen vpl <coughs> and the device name so here uh, if mm -hmm. you are lscfg hyphen vpl and there is this okay so let's say this one it will show the disk information okay so lscfg list configuration mm -hmm. and you can see that hard disk one and this is the motherboard information p1 means plan planner board t10 means target and uh, it is connected okay. to this location the and the size of this one is uh, 73 gb you can see that 7344 okay and uh, this is the model number and the part number okay, okay. complete info is a charge is information of hard disk is one okay no okay. Uh, it gives the information if I do it, of uh, that distribute. device okay lscfg hyphen vpl hard disk <clears throat> okay Correct, correct, correct. Okay, then uh, okay, I'll I'll uh, type these commands here because I missed two important commands here. Uh, first one is the uh, lscfg hyphen vpl and the device name. Okay, and uh, here hash lscfg. Mm -hmm. Ah, sorry, uh, it's ls attr hyphen el okay. and the device. Okay, so it shows you the attributes. Okay, so I'll fire the command ls attr hyphen el and this okay. zero enter. So you can see that these are the hard disk attributes. Okay, hard disk attributes and here health check enter. I'll just show you one example health check interval is zero. I'll check interval is equal to zero second. This is the meaning. Okay, so I'll change this value to 60. How to change that one? The command is csdev. Okay, and then uh, okay. hyphen l device name is disk one hyphen a for attribute. Okay, and uh, okay. health check interval equal to 60 second for example okay so it will change the health check interval to 60 seconds so by using the chdev we can change the attribute of a device okay mm -hmm. yeah right mm -hmm. <clears throat> i just one changed okay then uh, yeah so we are done with these 10 commands to see the errors in ai command is vrrpd okay and more to page wise output so you can see that uh, uh, identifier timestamp then type okay and uh, then uh, whether it is a hardware error or software mm -hmm. error then resource name and the description complete info is available mm -hmm. okay so uh, for us uh, identifier is important i'll just copy that identifier also okay so a lot of errors are there we keep this machine uh, up and running actually for the remote access so lots of errors are there mm -hmm. okay and if you want to get the detailed information of that specific identifier use that number it will give you the description okay 
So the following information event was reported by platform firmware. CEC hardware previously mm. reported error had been corrected by the system. So something was wrong in the system. Okay. And system itself has uh, recovered from that error. Okay. Not a problem. So go through all these commands. Okay. If you have any doubt, uh, you can contact me. Okay. So final command is diag. So diag means diagno uh, diagnostics. Mm. Okay. Diag means diagnostic. So if you want to uh, recover yep. the uh, hardware errors of the power hardware, you can use the diag okay. command. You can uh, run the diagnostics routines, advanced diagnostic routines, task selection and selection, selection. Okay. All the options are available for the self recovery. Just go through that one. Okay. And uh, really useful uh, command also. Okay. Yeah, great. So we are done for the day. You have a password also. So access the server and do the practice. Okay. Hi friends, this is Abhinash Pujari. In this topic, we are going to see how to manage services in AIX operating system. So services, simple definition of a service is it is backend process to support front end application. To support front end application. So to manage these services in AI operating system, we get the commands like lssrc, stop src, start src, refresh. So I'll show you the syntax of that. Start src hyphen s and the service name. This is the syntax actually. Then if you want to start a complete group of services, then start src hyphen g and the service group name. And uh, to stop that one, stop src hyphen s service name if you want to start a specific service. And to stop a complete group, stop src hyphen g and the service group name service group name okay to list the services available in aix ls src hyphen a command you can fire and uh, to refresh that one command is refresh refresh hyphen s and the service name okay so i'll do the uh, practical of these commands in services uh, stop src start start src uh, lssrc and and I refresh these commands to get actually. So let's access the AIX machine. Now, lshrc hyphen a more to get the page wise output. You can see that this is the subsystem group, PID, and the status. All these services are active over here from uh, the, the, these groups. Okay. So for a practice, We'll use the queue demo. We'll try to start this one, uh, which is inoperative now. To start this one, I'll pass the command start src hyphen s and the queue demo. You can see that system has started this one successfully. Okay. And uh, to start a complete group, start src hyphen g and this cooler. So it will start all printer related services available in AIX operating system. So if we uh, start a group of spooler, then it will start the queue demo on write SRV and LPD uh, demos actually. Same way to stop that one, stop src hyphen s queue demo we can use. And the queue demo subsystem was requested to stop. So system will stop that one. If you want to start, uh, if you want to stop complete group, Stop src hyphen g and the spooler. It will stop all the uh, running services uh, from that group. So write SRV and the LPD uh, stop successfully. Let's start the LPD demo. Start src hyphen s LPD and we'll try to restart that one. To that, what is the refresh hyphen s LPD. So system will refresh that one. You can see that the request for the subsystem refresh was completed successfully. So this way you can uh, refresh it. Okay. 
So these are the simple commands we use for the uh, services by using which we can manage the services in AIX operating system. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe our channel. Hi, in this topic, we are going to see how to schedule a job. My name is Avinash Pujari and I am a AX consultant working with the goals in Purple Out Technologies. Why we schedule a job? So why there is a need to schedule a job in real time environment? So if we uh, are doing, if we are doing repetitive activity on a regular basis, it's better to schedule that one, it's better to automate that one. So simple definition to schedule a job is it is an automated piece of work that can be performed at either a particular time or at recurring schedule. So it saves a lot of time actually. That's why it's better to schedule a job. Then um, how it works? You can schedule a job to run in a number of ways. So multiple uh, ways are available to schedule a job. First one is if you want to run a job only once at a specified time, then once tomorrow at a specified time, if you want to run a job on a specific day at a particular time, that way also we can schedule it. Daily at a particular time, that is also supported. And on the next occurrence of a particular date and time, this way we can schedule a job. And each job can be scheduled to run on any number of occasions by using different job parameters if necessary. Example, you can schedule a job to run at a different times on a different days. The scheduled jobs are displayed in the job schedule view. How it works in AIX? So in AIX, cron is the responsible daemon to start a job at the right time. So at the back end, the process name is the cron D, who does the all the management of our scheduled jobs. cron D starts at a system boot time. So when we start the AIX operating system, this service uh, gets started by default. Then cron D checks cron def file after every 60 seconds. So 60 seconds is the minimal interval to schedule a job. Every user has a right to schedule their own job. So whenever we create a new user in AIX operating system, that user has a right to schedule his or her own job. By default, cron.dni file is available. Now, what is the meaning of this fifth sentence? Um, in AIX, by default, every user has a right to schedule their own job. So if you want to restrict any specific user, you can put the entry of that user in this cron.dni cron file and that user will not be able to schedule the job. That's why this file is available by default. And uh, if you want, you can create this cron.allow file. By default, it is not available in AIX operating system. Now, uh, cron.allow is very um, uh, risky file, I would say, because uh, let's say if we have 100 users and if we add a single user in this cron.allow file, what does it what does that mean? Only one user can schedule a job. Rest of the 99 users cannot schedule their own job. Now why? Because in Unix, it uses the most restrictive permission. So this rule is common in all Unix environment and AI, it is also one of the Unix flavor. That's why this rule applies over here also. Now to schedule a job, there is a syntax available and the syntax is minute, hour, day of month, month of year, day of week, and command. In minute, we can have values between 0 to 59. In hour, we can have values between 0 to 23. Day of month, minimum 1, maximum 31. Month of year, 1 to 12. So 1 to 12 is uh, basically 1 means January and 12 means December. Day of week, it's uh, 0 means Sunday, 6 means Saturday and the command for in a practical, we are going to use the wall command to see the uh, scheduled job. So wall it always broadcast the message actually. So here wall welcome to goals. So we'll be using this example. So let's take a few example about job scheduling. So let's say I want to run a script on a 23rd June 7 p.m. So entries would be like this. Uh, in minute zero, in hour 19, then day of month, it is 23 and June means six and star means any day 
and the command so sh and the script name this would be the entry then one more example i want to create a user on 15th may 3 am okay so entries would be zero in the minute three in hours then 15 uh, in day of month then five month of year and star means i don't know what would be the date on that day so i can put star over here and mk user goals so mk user is the command in ai to create a user goals okay one more example from 15 may to 22nd may i want to run a backup command at uh, 6 15 pm so entries would be 15 18 then 15 hyphen 22 because 15th may to 22 uh, 15th may to 22nd may i want to run that one and then month is may that's why five and star uh, because i don't know what would be the day on those days and uh, a backup command then next example is on 22nd 24 26th may 1 am perform mkcs b so to Take the backup of a root with the in AIX command is MKCS B and entries would be 0, 1, 22, comma 24, comma 26, then 5 and star MKCS B. Okay, now task for you. So let's say I want to run a script after every 5 minutes. So this is the task for you. You can write your answer in the comment box of this video. Let's do the practical. So to do the practical, let's access our AIX server. And uh, here we have AIX 7.2. And uh, to access that, run tab hyphen L first, it will list you all the scheduled jobs in a cron type file. And to make an entry in a file, you have to fire the cron type hyphen E command to edit that one. But before that, let's fire the date command. So it's uh, 1826, 15th April. So let's schedule a job for 1828. Okay. So for that, cron tab hyphen E. Here, go to the last line and 28, 18, 15, 4, star I'll give and the wall command. And in wall, well done, Abhinash. Okay, save this file and then wait for the 1828. Perfect, so you can see that. Well done, Abhinash. So, job has been executed successfully. So, this way we schedule a job in real time environment. Now, let's see some other commands available in AIX related to the job scheduling. So, you can read the man page of a AT command. So, AT is also available to uh, schedule a job. So, runs command at a later time. You can go through the man page of this one. Then, uh, man batch. So, batch is also supported in AIX. Runs the job when the system load level permit. So, if you want to execute a job whenever the less load available on AIX server you can do this one so we are done great so if you have any question you can write a comment in a uh, comment box and uh, thank you for watching this video have a nice day hi this is Avinash Pujari today we are going to cover how to monitor and tune the AIX system what is monitoring? So very simple definition for this one is it is the systematic process of collecting and analyzing and using information to track a program's progress towards reaching its objective and to guide decisions. So this is the very important step uh, before starting a troubleshooting of uh, any AIX issue. First thing uh, we need to monitor the uh, status of the AIX and then we can decide our troubleshooting plan. In AIX, to monitor the entire system command is topaz topaz it shows the complete system information it monitors all the parameters like cpu memory input output devices hot processes paging space and the nfs related thing also the topaz command reports selected statistics about the activity on a local system and for this command boss.pub.tools and 
pop agent.tools file sets to be installed on a system. So these file sets, these file sets are required to use the topaz command. Then there are other commands available related to the monitoring. Like uh, first command is the VM stack. By using the VM stack command, we can monitor the performance of a paging space. So paging space is required to improve the performance of our system. So by using this one, you can see the status of the paging space and the actual memory also. The next command is the IOSTAT. IOSTAT command we use uh, for the monitoring of the IO devices. So it includes the hard disk and CD-ROM. It shows the uh, complete statistics of these IO devices. Then LVM stat command is also available to monitor the LVM actually. Before firing this command, make sure that VG is ready to provide the statistics to the LVM. We need to enable it separately. Then net stat, yeah, so to monitor a network, net stat command is available. By using this one, we can see the MAC addresses, which ports are open, which are the listening ports, complete info we get by using the net stat command. Then uh, SAR command is also available, which is a system activity report. It shows the processor related uh, information in AI's operating system. And then LPARSTAT hyphen I. So LPARSTAT, it shows the complete statistics of a specific LPAR. By using this command, we'll come to know that AIX is running on a standalone machine or on a LPAR, okay? So let's do the practical of this command. Once we are done with the practical of the monitoring, then we'll see the tuning related stuff. So to do that, let's access the AIX machine. So here we have a putty software with us and uh, tell it local IP address 166. Great, so AIX version 7, root, root. So we have AIX 7.2 installed on this Power 7 machine. Let me change the appearance of this. and then let's fire the topaz command topaz make sure it is in small letters because it is the unix operating system it is case sensitive great and you can see that topaz monitor for host ax7 in trouble two second it is monitoring the CPU utilization now, then network utilization, disk utilization, file system utilization, then at the back end, hot processes. So currently, Topaz is uh, consuming more uh, resources. That's why it is on top. Then events and queues and paging and memory information. You can see it over here. And NFS related information is also available. Okay. If you need more help, you can press H. So after once we are done with the monitoring, press Q. Then let's see VM start command. So VM start two five. That means two second interval five outputs. It will show the kernel thread, memory, page, false, and CPU statistics. Then IO start. IO start two second interval five output. So here we have drives and CD so almost uh, six drives are there and one CD so nothing is happening that's why it is showing zero 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 okay this is the test machine actually so no read and write operations are going on on the machine then next command is bar that is system activity report and again two and five two second interval and five outputs LPAR stat hyphen I to get the complete LPAR information. So this is the machine running on a LPAR actually. That's why you can see that partition number is seven. If the partition number is uh, zero, in that case, we can say that it is the standalone machine. Okay, but if it is not zero, then it is the LPAR actually. Great, so complete info we get over here. Let's see the tuning. Why tuning is required? Now, 
again simple definition for a tuning is it is a process in which one or more parameters of a device or a model are adjusted upwards or downwards to achieve an improved or specified result so to get a uh, good performance from system sometimes we need to tune the parameters so in ai to tune the parameters commands are available but before firing these commands make sure you have a proper email or a document available with you because uh, if you uh, change the wrong parameter it could impact on the entire system so there is a command available vmo to tune the paging space parameters then there is a command available ioo that is to tune input output device parameters then LVMO command is also available to tune the LVM parameters and NO to tune network parameters. So these are the common commands we use to tune the parameters in the AIX operating system. Let's do the practical of this one. VMO hyphen A more so all these parameters can be tuned. Make sure uh, you have proper values with you before making changes in this. So, next command is LVMO hyphen A. So, here um, these are the tuning parameters available. O hyphen A, it will show you the complete uh, LVM settings. Then, uh, IOO hyphen A, page more. These are the settings related to the I.O. devices and uh, then N.O. These are the settings for the network devices. You can change this one by using the same commands. Okay, I'll just show you the man pages of this one because everything is running fine over here. So you can see that manages the tuning parameter of a network what do you want to do what do you actually tune in this you have to refer a document for this one this is the man page of a lvmo command man IOO, man page of uh, input output pinnable parameters. Great, so relatively it's a very small topic, but very important. If you have any question, you can put it in a comment box. I'll get back to you on the same. Thank you for watching this video. Have a nice day. Hi friends, this is Avinash Pujari. In session one, we are going to cover the AIX history and power history. So you have already seen my profile, I'm IBM AIX certified. Let's start the session. So AIX history. So IBM launched their AIX version one in 1986 for their IBM 6150 RT station. And it was based on Unix system five releases one and two. In developing AIX, IBM and Interactive System Corporation also incorporated source code from 4.2 and 4.3 BSD Unix. Then, later they produced AIX version 3, also known as AIX 6000, based on System V release 3 for their power based RS6000 platform. So, if you see from the RS6000 onwards, they started grabbing more market. Since uh, 1990, AIX has served as a primary operating system for the RS6000 series. Later, uh, they renamed IBM eServer P series, then IBM System P, and now IBM Power Systems. After that, they launched the AIX version 4, introduced in 1994. They have added the uh, Symmetrix multiprocessing with the introduction of first RS6000 SMP servers and continued to evolve through the 1990s version 4.1 it was slightly modified form was also the standard operating system for the apple network server systems and sold by the apple computer to complement the macintosh line then a beta test version of ax5.l 
for the IA64 systems was released, but according to the documents released in the SCO versus IBM lawsuit, less than 40 licenses for the finished Monterey Unix were ever sold before the project was terminated in 2002. In AIX PyL, they launched the 5.1, 5.2, 5.3 versions. Then in year uh, 2007, AIX6 was launched. It ran as an open beta from June 2007 until the general availability of AIX6.1 on November 2007. Major new features were in uh, 6.1 included full role-based access control, uh, WPAR concept, enhanced security, and live partition mobility on the Power6 hardware. AIX 7.1 was announced in year 2010 and open beta ran until general availability of AIX 7.1 in September 2010. Several new features included better scalability, enhanced clustering and management capabilities were added. In AIX 7.1, it includes a new built-in clustering capabilities called Cluster Aware AIX. And 7.2 is the latest version of AIX. It was announced in year 2015 and released in December 2015. Now, in 7.2, uh, there are features like live kernel update capabilities, which allows operating system fixes to replace the entire AIX kernel with no impact to application. AIX 7.2 was also restructured to remove obsolete components. The networking components boss.net.tcp.client was repackaged to allow additional installation flexibility. Unlike 7.1, 7.2 is only supported on systems based on power 7 or lighter processors. So if you have power 5, power 6, then you'll not be able to use the AIX 7.2 version. Power 7 compulsory required or power 8. Now let's see the history of the power hardware. So power stands for performance optimization with enhanced risk. So risk means it's a reduced instruction set of computing. The first processor was uh, with name Power ISA. It was launched in year 1990, followed by Power Series, uh, Power 1, Power 2, Power 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So while recording this video, Power it is the latest processor available in the market and the Power 9 will very soon uh, be launched in the market. So let's see Power ISA. If I click on this link, it will take me to the Wikipedia page. On Wikipedia, you can read the complete information related to the power hardware. So you can see IBM Power Instruction Set Architecture. It was the first processor launched in the market in Power Series. Then uh, let's see the Power 7. If I click on Power 7, it will take me to the Power 7 Wikipedia page. And uh, here is the information available. So for more info, you can go to the wikipedia and read this complete information all the models information is also available with the uh, wikipedia page now our main goal is to see the power 8 so if i click on power 8 it will take me to the 3d view of the power 8 servers so you can see different different servers are available different different models are available let's see let's see power system s824 and it will show the complete 3d view so this is the 8 ssf hdd then um, operation panel this is dvd this is a 2 usb port and ssd disk drive we can put over here let's see the back view of the server and in back view we can see the power supply ports and the other ports available with this this is a hmc port then two usb 2.0 two usb 3.0 then power supply you can see four power supplies are there and um, four port 1g four port 1ge lan if i do the zoom you can see these are the hard drives available and this is the power 8 processor let's open the uh, cover and inside of this you can see the two processors are available this is the complete info of the server it maximum two processor car deployed and one tb ram we get with this 
really good uh, 3d view we get from this so two power at dual chip model 16 tall dim and uh, fans also available let's insert the cover so this is how it looks let's see one more model this time we'll see the 870 so this is the uh, complete rack where we get the IO drawers and the management server also and this is the complete view of the rack let's see the power IO drawer and again we can see complete 3d view of this machine so in this uh, it is a 64 uh, dim slots available up to 4 tb and um, processor cores maximum 8 so 64 processor or 80 processors we can add into this let's insert this one into the rack again then let's remove the control unit and this is the complete this is the control unit information pause this video and you can read the complete information so this is the back view of the server let's insert it again and let's see the IO drawer also this is the information related to IO driver pause the video to see the complete info and this is the complete 3d view let's insert this again so this is all about the power hardware thank you for watching this video subscribe our youtube channel to get more information hi this is avinash pujari today i'll show you how to do the upgradation of the hmc for that we need to go to the ibm.com and from there we can download the release level and the required fixes for the HMC and then click on download now. So I have already downloaded few updates so you can see that uh, version 7 release 7 3.0 and uh, version 7 release 7.4.0 then go to the uh, HMC management console click on updates and then update HMC so right now you can uh, see the version is 7.3.0 then click next Select the location where you have kept the file. In this case, I have kept file in CD-ROM. Now HMC is checking the files whether it is available or not. Then click on media image. Next. And confirm service installation.
click on finish so you can see that uh, HMC upgradation has been started and uh, it will take some time to upgrade this one approximately 30 minutes are required to upgrade this one once the upgradation is successful we'll be able to see the successful message so click on ok so you can see corrective service installation was successful and then we need to reboot the HMC once the HMC is rebooted You can see that version 7 release 7.4.0.0 so login with the HSC root and the password of the HMC and uh, here we go HMC upgradation is successful Thank you for watching this video, don't forget to subscribe this.